Hey, what up, players? It's Warboss Tay. I got an Avatars, Avatars of War Board Dragon Bane. Unfortunately, I got this guy off of eBay, which is not the unfortunate part. The unfortunate part was that it came in too late for uh, joining in the rest of the guys, but the good thing is that he does look like he'll go in a unit of Slayers with his Mohican hairstyle. And uh, I think it's just a great sculpt. It looked great. I saw it on eBay and I was like, it's a fantastic model and it looks like it'll fit right in with the rest of the Slayers unit. So uh, everything down to the bling looks very Warhammer-esque, dwarf inspired. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what comes inside the pack and I'm going to build him up and talk, we'll talk a little bit about what I think of the model and the sculpt and what works and what doesn't work and what fit and what didn't. But I, I just love that they show you this kind of green stuffed um, mock-up model. I guess like the, how they when they were making it with the like it, it's it's not in pewter like you could see that they've they're doing the intricate inlay for the axe head and everything but I love that they show you kind of like what it is when they're in the sculpting process. Okay, so I opened this and like it says you have the optional bits of the Mohican hairstyle, the back banner and the dragon skull trophy. Looks like the dragon skull trophy doesn't really fit anywhere on the base just cuz it's so big. So um, it could be something you add to a war machine or uh, like an emplacement or just maybe as unit filler or maybe as something that he stands on top of uh, if you can fit, fit it or model it in such a way but we will see. Avatars of War just has a really great, um, really great range of things from chaos to or marauders, I guess they call them, to uh, dwarves, to orcs. Their, their models and their sculpts are just really good. First, let's take a look at the character Boar Dragon Mane. The tab at the bottom was a little long, so you're going to have to take your pliers and just clip it shorter. Um, and he comes on this diagonal base, but the focus of the model actually looks like it would make more sense to put him on a horizontally slotted base. So I'm going to probably remove him and put him on a horizontal one. But then I think the reason they don't put him on a horizontal base is because look how far out the axes go to the sides. Um, it just seems like it would interfere with any of the models that were standing right next to him. So I don't know, would you, would you keep him here on this diagonal slotted base? I might have to just not glue him into the actual base and just glue all the rest of the bits on him and figure out what I'm going to do with him later. Or I might put him, clip off the tab at the bottom completely and maybe mount him on this dragon skull so that he stands up a little bit higher from the rest of the slayers in the unit. Or, or wherever. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's going to take some creative thinking. Let's get in a little bit closer to the model to see all the fine bits in detail. At the end of this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray prime this model in black and then in lightly spray over that some uh, gray primer so that we can really pick out the details. It's kind of hard to see in the light and um, when it's all completely unsprayed and everything but you see he's got kind of like this dragon scale cloak looking thing, heavy arm armbands, the details on the axes. This looks like a dragon breathing fire. It looks really cool. And here's just some runes, inlaid designs. There's a little hole on the top of his head for what you're going to slot the, the mohawk into. Speaking of the mohawk, this is what it looks like. Fine, fine uh, lines and details inside. There's a little bit of flash you're going to need to shave with the hobby knife. And in the middle there's a, a little bit of flash here too. There's a knob that slots into the hole on the top of the dwarf's head, but there's also a line of a flash that you're gonna need to clean off. Next let's take a look at the dragon head up close. It's just really a skull. So it's just like a trophy that I guess he carries around with him. Finally here's his back banner and this is really great. You've got a keg of what I presume to be ale, a heavy book, a lot of bling and teeth and claws. And here's the front side of it. Book is open so you can have some good fun with writing in the pages. And you've got this dwarf um, little piece of metal medallion or something. 
is another piece of the rune. So it looks like it'll match perfectly into a Warhammer Dwarf Slayer Regiment with, you know, just the, the design of what the back banner is, the book design, and the teeth design, and the this uh, giant icon design. It, it looks like it'll fit perfectly into a Slayer unit, or you could put mount that on the back of any Dwarf Champion you have for a Games Workshop and it'll fit on that. So, okay, I'm gonna build him now and we'll see what he looks like when we get back. So here he is, the Dwarf Slayer model from Avatars of War, built up and glued together. Decided to put him on a little piece of cork so that he would stick up a little bit over the masses and um, just to give him a little bit of a height. Um, had to green stuff, liquid green stuff, it's where the hairline of the mohawk meets his head just because there was this huge gap when I glued it in. So um, I'm going to see if I need to smooth it down a little bit more. I just applied it a little while ago. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to take him outside now, get him primered up, and we'll see what he looks like when he's um, back and ready for painting. Okay, so we're back. Um, a lot of people have asked me, or not a lot, but I, I have gotten some private messages and comments asking me why I use gray rather than black or white when I prime my miniatures, and I just found that gray is a, a nice mid shaded tone so that you can see some detail and, and it's not all washed out like if you're going to do white, and it's not all blacked out like if you're going to do black. You can see where are the bits that you're going to need to highlight and um, and work on. So so this is the line that you see between where his hairline for his mohawk meets his um, meets his scalp, where I'm still going to need to fill in a little bit more with green stuff, liquid green stuff. I mean, um, on this side it's not so badly pronounced, but uh, even when I thought that I had filled it in, there's still that obvious line there. So. I'm gonna do that before I start painting, but you can really catch all the details, like especially his expression. He's got such a great, great sculpt that his expression and um, all the features on his face look so good compared to, say, one of these really old metal Games Workshop slayers that still have great characterful expression, um, but is just on a different, totally feels like it's a different scale, like the detail on the beards and on the weaponry just seems so much tighter and more more intricate on on this this guy so really happy with him i'm glad i put him on a cork base just to raise him up give him a little bit of height and i can't wait to get painting so this is your little unboxing of the miniature from avatars of war called boar dragon bane and um I left off his skull, so I'm gonna figure out something to do with that, but I'm really happy with this sculpt. I highly, highly recommend it. Looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun to paint, and I can't wait to get started. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.